on today's show. I couldn't be more excited to be joined by Jack Mudd and Jane Campbell, the faces of Future Motion. We'll get into as many of your questions as we can, along as along with the origin story of the One Wheel, which I can't wait for. And we'll play a game with you guys that we have a feeling you're all going to rock out to. Plus, we'll even give away a mafia bag for free to anybody who's donated to the Float Life Fund. So go get your donations in by 1045 this morning at litmradio.com to enter yourself in to the drawing for a free mafia bag from Jack and Jane. It's time to get after it, folks, So charge up and say hello to Future Motion themselves. It is Looch Dog in the morning, and this is the voice of One Wheel. Welcome back, folks. For all of you listening and watching, this is going to be a good one. We're excited to be here with you. It's Looch Dog in the morning, of course, joined by my producer, the man who makes things run, Belly, Matt LaBelle. Hello, my man. Good to be here, as always, and this is the voice of One Wheel. Yes, sir. Are you ready to do this? Because you got a big show today with Jack and Gene. Jack, what's up, my friend? Hey. How you doing, man? Doing good. Jane good. over there, we've got the whole studio set up with it. Jane, what is that behind you? First one wheel that was ever made. Ever? Ever. Ever. Look at this thing. Belly, look at this thing. Jack, did you, you awesome. have does it work? Like oh, is with it, a is, chain and oh I man, mean if, that's for the listeners on the podcast, this thing looks like it's straight off the production line. I don't know how you would write have you ridden it? <laughs> it was Let me ridden. show you this never saw any production line. <laughs> <laughs> that only saw the garage floor <laughs> and And that's about it. All right, so we've got a lot to do today, and I am excited to do that with you guys. Like I said, we've got to give away a free Mafia bag, but uh, we want to start things off. Of course, we're going to answer all your guys' questions, or as many as we can get to. But I would like to know, and this is for the listeners too, so hello to everybody on YouTube watching. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Belly is going to collect all your questions from the Float Life Social Media Lounge, uh, and of course... The Magic Robots call-in line. We've got a lot of new stuff today. Craft and Ride is in the logos. Shout out to them. Jack and Jane, I have a question for you. Can we start out there? Let's do it. If you had only one song to float to for the rest of your life, kind of a desert island kind of question, what would that song be? And before you answer, if you're on the live chat right now, again, in the future, mo- uh, I'm sorry, in the float life, Social Media Lounge, please write in right now if you could choose one song. You had to pick only one song to float to for the rest of your life. What would that song be? I need you guys on the YouTube chat to write into Belly right now. What would that song be while we listen to Jack and Jane tell us theirs? Yeah, so this is this is really difficult, and I'm very <laughs> thankful that you gave us a heads up about this about yeah. three minutes before. <laughs> so I went straight to the Spotify. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> as of this morning, my song, I don't know how to pronounce the artist's name. It's spelled K-H-R-U-A-N-G-B-I-N. Prove Bagan. And the song is called People Everywhere. So take it, take it. Belly, hopefully you got People that. People Everywhere. I feel song. like I've heard that song before. I do too. Well, yeah. but, but see, this is what we can't do. We can't debate over every yeah. song. We're just going to collect good, them, and I that's, that's a, good a good one. Choice. What do you got, Jane? Uh... As of this morning, it would have to be Sunday Candy by Donnie Trumpet and the Social Experiment. Sunday Whoa. Candy. Now, remember, we can't, we don't have the rights to play all these songs for you, but we want to start creating a list. Do we have anything coming in from the Float Life Social Lounge? Got uh, two so far. Uh, we've got Metallica's Orion. Fantastic. And then uh, we've got uh, the Immigrant Song by Led Zeppelin. Wow, Ooh, really? That? I had a feeling it was going to be just a wide range. Now, remember, throughout the entire show, I would like to get everybody's uh, one song that they could float to. If they could only pick one. Mine right now is Lupe, uh, Lupe Fiasco, The Show Goes On. Ooh, love it. That's it's, it's sampled off that Modest Mouse song, and God, it's just so good. Um, so, guys, we've got a lot to do. you got your coffee going. You've done your jumping jacks. Are you ready to hit this thing running? Oh, yeah. Ready. Well, I mean, how did you – I mean, can you tell us how this thing started? Because, I mean, obviously we're going to get into some more serious questions, but I would like to know as a fan, first of all, thank you guys for making such an unbelievable product. I mean – 
for all you listeners out there, this is not the engineering team. Jack and Jane are the face of the company, the marketing head of marketing department. I am not going to be asking them what the voltage of the batteries should read out at 94.5%. That's not what I'm doing today. That's a very good question, and we've actually talked about maybe we'll have an engineer come on the show to ask some of the more uh, in-depth questions too. But I want to get to, really, can you tell me a little bit about how this thing started, how you guys got into it, and how this board went from you know what it looks like behind you guys, which is like a dinosaur, to what I ride around at least three times a day? Yeah, um, so it all started with Kyle, um, and Kyle grew up in Canada snowboarding and um, and then went on to go to Stanford and be a smart engineer guy. How long and, ago uh, was this? How long ago was this? So let's see, uh, about 12 years ago, if my math is correct, <laughs> Kyle would have started working on this project. This has been 12 <laughs> years. How did you, how did you get into this then? Um, so Kyle, Kyle was doing this nights and weekends, uh, while he was working at IDEO, which is a design firm, um, here in the Bay area, uh, for about eight years, he's doing nights and weekends on, on trying to build that or things kind of similar to that. He started by just taking a tire and putting on a wheel and going down a hill and realized that he's going to need some, some more technology to Wait, make it. Wait, with self-balancing or without it? Just just trying to yeah. balance it? Straight manual. I have no idea how the guy thought of it. You know, like, it's like, that's an interesting thought. I oh, think. no, no. I have, I'll tell you right now, Jack, the way I got into this is because I started looking at all these, like, leaf tech boards and boosted boards, and I'm like, wow, this is really the idea of a motor on a skateboard is badass. That's awesome to me. However, yeah. I was really nervous because of all these small, tiny wheels. Like, if I'm going at 20 miles an hour and I hit a little pebble in the road, which exists everywhere, I think we've all seen the video of that poor guy riding only the one wheel that the sunglasses got him in the middle of the road. You know, so there's always going to be something lying around. I wanted something with a massive wheel so I didn't have to worry about, like, a little tiny bump sending me. Um, right. So once I saw the one wheel, I was like, I don't care what it costs. I'm, but that's it. We love you. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jane, how did you get into this thing then? Uh, you know, I have, like, lived in Santa Cruz on and off, and I had, like, seen them kind of cruising around uh, town. And then once I moved back after college, I, you know, looked for jobs, found this one, and was like, that is insanely cool, applied. And I remember when I came in before, like, any interview process happened jack was like all right come on like we're hopping on a board yeah and my first thought was like oh my gosh if i can't ride it like am i not gonna get this job well belly that's what i was wondering i was like i wonder if these people have ridden before they got the job like because you you rode for the first time and you were pretty good at it belly i mean my got fairly good balance so it but helped out can you speak to somebody who's never ridden before do you think it's impossible to ride or do no, you think it's, it's no, pretty doable? nothing's impossible as long as you put your mind to it Woo! that's belly matt labelle what i'm talking so, about belly, you'd be ready you'd be ready for job interview yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, there you go. Got the job. Well, Ready. I, I, I got to share the story of how I got involved because um, it's pretty funny. So uh, so I met Kyle about a month before the Kickstarter was about to go live in, in 2013. Sure. And um, came in for an interview. He was looking for some social media help. It was just him in a, in a little room in Mountain View at the time. And uh, chatted for a while. And I had, you know, never used Twitter, never had an Instagram. Facebook was deactivated. Just like, but I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm 22 years old. Of course, I know how to use social media, you know. <laughs> He's totally a social lied. media manager. <laughs> to totally lied, <laughs> lied my way. And, uh, you know, left. It was unclear whether I got the gig. Um, and like a month later, over the holidays, I was at my grandmother's house in New Mexico. And I got a call from Kyle. And he was like, hey, we're, uh, we're going to CES in Las Vegas in four days. And, uh, you know, I was wondering if you'd come help out. So I'm like, hell yeah, let's do this. I've never ridden it, by the way, never ridden it. Just heard about it, like showed me a little clip, video clip. Uh, so went, went to CES, went to Las Vegas. Uh, he's like, we'll be in this Airbnb, get to the Airbnb. I've never been to an Airbnb before. And, and, and what year is this? How long ago is this? If, I, don't know, I don't know if you already said, what year is this? This is 2013. This, wow. is, this is, actually this would have been January, like January one of 2014 because well, this is awesome so, i don't think people realize they like they're just like oh cool the xr just came out can't wait till april like dude these people have been like working on this for years it's unbelievable to hear it so okay, keep going 10 years so <laughs> so i get there never been an airbnb there's like a guy i is to this day it's the weirdest airbnb i've ever been to there's like a guy wandering around like 
basically just some shorts of like, so we share this house. How does this work? Kyle's not there, right? Kyle's like, oh yeah, yeah, I'll be there. Like, don't worry, like I'll be there. And I met him one time, right? Um, so Kyle, Kyle was supposed to get there like that night. Didn't get there that night. Uh, then he's supposed to get there the next morning. Wasn't there the next morning. So I get it. I get a call around noon, and I'm just like, I have no idea what I'm doing. I get a call around noon saying, Hey, um, I'm in. Nevada. I'm just got to Nevada. I'm in a Starbucks. My phone is at one percent, and I'm pressing live on Kickstarter. Uh, so you can you can like figure it out. <laughs> so that's what happened. He, he like pressed the button. It went live. He lost. You know, phone ran out of battery. He was what I now know is that he was, you know, hustling like crazy to get um, the second board ever to work, so that we had one working board for the for CES the where we launched. Wow, that's um, crazy. Th- that's got to be nerve wracking. So, like if anything goes wrong with that board, uh, that's the, that's so, it. Uh, and no one could ride the damn thing. So I, 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 tried, I tried riding it like four days later. It took four days of me working that show to let him uh, give me a ride. And it was impossible. Well, here's um, a funny thing. We long. sent we sent a group. Uh, we sent our – if you guys don't, haven't heard this yet, we, you know on Wednesdays and Fridays we do a morning show called Looch Dog in the Morning. It's right here on the same channel on uh, TTR Studios for YouTube. It's a podcast as well. We sent our co-host Maddie Potts out into the streets of L.A. to ask people what the role of a social manager, a social media manager is, and I feel like that might be funny to hear right now. What is the role of a social media manager? What do they do? They do Instagram, Twitter, and all social media. How much do you think that that position should pay? Mm. Um, are we talking salary? Yeah. So, I mean, their salary, right? Or no? Yeah. Independent contractor? Well, I would say probably like, they probably don't, mm, maybe 20 to 30. Yeah, that's probably about all they're yeah. worth. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's probably all they're worth. That's ridiculous. I just... <laughs> We have a, a whole lot of answers from that, and that is Maddie Potts, our co-host from the other show. But uh, speaking of, I mean, since you guys are talking about outreach, um, customer service has been on, you know, I, I'm curious. I know there's been a lot of questions. What's up with the customer service? Um, and, and, and so I wonder, because not everybody who owns a board owns their own business. I Luckily, I do. I'm a wedding DJ. I kind of have an idea of what it is like to... Um, to, to think of things from a business standpoint, I'm wondering if you guys can touch on some of the questions that people have had feeling like there's been a disconnect between um, the social me- uh, I'm sorry, the customer service side of things and people who have already bought their boards and kind of need help. There seems to be a gap. Did the company grow too fast? Um, it, was it a, a lack of resources? What is that? Can you speak to that? Yeah, customer service is something that we're, um, we're really excited about sort of the direction that things are going in um, over here. So if we flash back to last year when we launched the One Meal Plus um, at CES last January, we had about one and a half uh, full-time customer service agents on staff. And so we launched that product and, you know, we're getting like a couple thousand tickets a day. Wow. Right. And not and, to uh, say because is it all because the, there's something wrong with all those couple thousand boards or just questions no, no. And, and comments and oh. Every, I mean, every question that you could even, you questions you couldn't even imagine. Okay. Questions I definitely couldn't imagine. Right, you right, know, right, uh, right. Everything from like, we get emails from people that are like, how do I, you you found our email and you're asking like, how do I buy it? It's like, did you not go through the website? <laughs> <laughs> but as a, as a business owner, I can tell you, you you've got to treat the masses almost like like the the like the slow like the slowest one in, in the chain is gonna you're only as fast as your slowest person you kind of got to treat everybody like <laughs> listen man you're probably not gonna get this how I'm trying belly I'm trying to skirt around this you got to treat them like elementary school kids that's the truth when I was writing for newspapers it yeah. was right to a fifth grader you have to do that when you're writing to a group or dealing with a group of people you have to dumb it down. And you have to realize that there are probably still people that go to McDonald's and then look at when they get to the cashier and they look at the menu and don't know what they're going to get. Like, what is the matter with you? How many times have you been to a McDonald's? You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't know you want their, their, the Big Mac? You know that. You know what they're offering? Is the McRib up? No? Okay, Big Mac. Done. They just can't decide between all the great options. Well, so that's what I'm kind of speaking to with the people who go on to one, you know, futuremotion, onewheel.com, find a contact info where you could buy it, and they ask, where can we buy it? Inundating their inbox. 
Um, well, it's just, I mean, it just seems funny because it's it's harder to it's harder to find the email than it is to find anything else. By you now, know? Yeah. Right. But so and take us to now because I want to highlight something. Yeah. So so what's exciting? So like I was saying, last last year at this time we had probably one and a half folks, right? And that makes it things really difficult to be able to, um, you know, get to all the phone calls that come in, right? If you have, if you're, if you're uh, not just treading water but drowning in, in the amount of tickets that you have, right? One phone call that might be 20 minutes is is a huge opportunity cost in terms of how many folks you can get back to via email and all that. So basically, flash forward to this year, we have, um, as of now, we have five full time folks that work here in the office in Santa Cruz. Um, and so, you know, we're really excited to be able to, like, we, we're ending days now with like maybe 100 tickets left or maybe fewer, which for us is a huge improvement. Right. So, now, what if somebody's listening and going, why don't you just hire like 10 more people? Like, I don't understand. Yeah. I mean, if, if you're interested in customer service role, future motion, send us an email. Absolutely. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think we're probably. It'll still get drowned in the tickets. Yeah, it's just going to get drowned, Jack. But no, it's I, that's definitely understandable. I mean, no, that no, that level is clear now. We're yeah, they got it on lockdown, Belly. They're good. They got yeah, it. No, now they're ready to roll. You know, that, that's a, it's a huge priority for us. Um, it's a huge priority for us, and it and it and um, yeah, we're still hiring actually, probably at that position. Well, maybe you uh, could speak to that, Jack and uh, Jane. I'd like to hear your thoughts on you know we were talking about. Um, I mean, obviously we're talking about customer service. I want to know what it means to you because. If I read this to you, Mecky Dixon, this this story is unbelievable, and it, it caught my eye. It's a 15-year-old posting in the One Wheel Owners Group, and he says, Super bummed. Once I get my One Wheel back from repairs, my parents said that I have to sell it, and I'm never allowed to buy a One Wheel FML. And if you sift through the comments, he's 15 years old, and they're so frustrated because of um, the process of sending the board in and getting it back and not getting it back in time and not being able to talk to people, they're going to force this kid to sell it. That can't sit well with you guys. No, it definitely doesn't because I think, I mean, as once we have heard about the story, I mean, Jack said it best where like a 15 year old doesn't deserve to have his dreams crushed right, right. now. Like he loves, if he loves the board and wants to keep riding, like we want to keep him riding for sure. So we actually like went back and talked to our customer support team, kind of got like the lowdown on what's going on. And we've actually been in contact with um, not only him, but also his mom trying to, uh, you know, like settle, settle some ground, make, make everyone happy in this situation and, uh, get his board back. Get his board back. So we've like been talking to the folks in San Jose who have been working on his board and, um, you know, our team has been in contact with his mom. So Good. And here's, okay. I mean, here's things like, you know, at the end of the day, we, we actually do do this so that you guys can have a great time and a great experience right. and that you know if you're if you're not having a great customer service experience that's definitely part of it and so um you know we're not gonna sit here and say that everyone is stoked all the time and which is what we work towards um but we are always trying to get better at it so um that's you know that's no i appreciate you guys that's not an easy question i know that's not an easy question at all belly what do you got belt by dead mouth Mouse five belt by De okay very good song choice thank or you dead Remember mouse it, uh, for uh, all of you yeah get your song choices in if you had one song jack what i'm sorry i talked over you dead mouse rides a one wheel boom Does Does that's right yeah. folks Yep. Belly set me up I to look like an idiot there. What did I say? Dead Mouth 5? I said Dead Mouth 5, <laughs> but I always say it that way because I like to read things phonetically. Yes. But thank it's you. only be out of hilarity for me. Keep your songs coming in. If you Dead had only Mouse. one choice of a song to listen to for the rest of your floating career, what would it be? Mine is Lupe Fiasco Float On. So thank you guys for answering that question. I know that's not an easy one. Um, if I can uh, give like a little customer service tip. Please. Like for people who yes. like write support at. So yeah. normally our team. Um, for like new tickets will work from like oldest to newest. So like sometimes they jump around and that's like not always the case, but like for the most part. So if you keep emailing your ticket, some gets like refreshed to the top sometimes. So sometimes if you don't get a response for a couple of days, like it's because your ticket is refreshing and getting like pushed to the newer bunch. Right. And we're working on this, right? We've got a system right now where if you email future motion, every time you email them, it sends you to the back of the, of the, the queue, right? Right. The, yeah. So that's we're trying to like figure out a way, maybe like around that, and try and like. Uh, but in the meantime, don't. If you sent us an email yesterday and it's 
you know, six hours later than you just sent it. Don't send another one. Right. They'll okay. get to it. Just understand now. But but I, I got to say, I, I, I understand why people are because, see, the problem is that some the people out there who are just a they're just a customer. And I don't mean that to diminish them at all. They're just they're not a business person. They're not thinking like a business person. They've never done a startup before. I think a lot of people will say, oh, it's a company. They have a product. They must have the infrastructure as an Apple or an Amazon or a Microsoft like a lot of startup companies, it's give and take. Like, yes, we can maybe hire an extra customer service person or two, but then we might not come out with a new product for a little bit longer. Or maybe some of the uh, the other things that we were working on will have to take a step back. So I understand that that we're still in the growing phase of this company. It's still an early adoption. I would like to say let's give them a chance, but I think there also can be, you know, like you said, you've, you've hired more people, you're, you're revamping the, uh, the system, so I think we'll see some improvements from there. And I got to say, a lot of people are going to really appreciate that. European service centers, what's up there? Do we have any uh, hope for people in Europe to get a board um, worked on maybe in Germany or Italy and not having to send it out to you guys uh, for a complete repair? It basically costs a new board just to do that. No hope for Europeans. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry for no booze. And I am yeah. full on Italian. Uh, so I want the mothership, the motherland, to have yeah. to have a service center. So talk to us about that. What's going on there? Yeah, um, that's something that we have been um, – that's been on the uh, to-do list, I suppose, for a while now. Um, and, and, and to be honest, it's, it's been difficult to find a, a good partner over there because – um, as we talked about on the pre-show yesterday, um, so there's only one stock part on a one wheel. Every single part on a one wheel is completely customized for one wheels. Out of how many parts would you say on, on a guess? 80? Jeez. Uh, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Jane's like 74. Let me tell you this. It's more than you think. It's, I think it's like 100 and something. But only you know, one like, of them is stock. One is stock, one piece on a one wheel. I mean, there's there's so much. If, like, don't open up your board, but if you have, and we know who you are, Sunny Wheels. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's a lot of like, if you look at the PCB, right? If you look at the the computer control thing, like, it's there's a million things on there. You know, it's like, <laughs> they're all soldered. It's like super crazy. Anyways, but that would uh, make sense why somebody wouldn't be able. You can't. So you can't just like like piggyback off of go kart dealers and say, "Hey, fix this board for people." Exactly. Yeah. Actually, the only the only thing that is stock is the go kart tire. That's <laughs> really it. So everything else is fully customized. So you, you really need to find someone who has like the competency of like a medical, you know, medical device. Uh, you know, re, re, I don't know if they even repair medical devices. But, but that's like the tolerances that we deal with. It's super, super, um, you know, Intricate. precise. In de yeah, in detail. And so it sounds to me, Jack, that maybe we need, if you guys in Europe, and thank you guys all for listening, uh, you know, from France, Italy, Germany, we're getting a whole ton of hits. So really, thank you. That's <laughs> awesome. Um, it sounds like they could use, Feature Motion could use a little bit of your help in maybe finding some people who are able to do this. It's not because the problem that the company is facing is that the, you, you just can't hand it off to, you know, Joe Schmo tire company and expect them to fix, you know, 74 custom pieces. Right. Yep. Exactly. So I guess, it's are gonna, you guys take a high level of training? We're going to need to go out to wherever it is with, um, you know, a crew of people that, or use uh, this show as a platform, Jack, and, and ask them if you have, if you think you have the training of a, a like, well, I don't know what you mean by medical grade um, engineer, basically. But if you think that you could work on one and you live in Europe, hit us up. I'll put you in touch with Jack and Jill. Uh, Jack and Jill. God, I knew I was going to do that. I you knew I was going to do that. Water. I'm sorry. Jack and Jane would love to hear from you. So if there's anybody out there and you know you want your European service centers, if you think you can help, reach out to them. I'm sure they could use some help and at least start a conversation. Um, so they don't have to fly around Europe looking for uh, needles in a haystack. That makes a lot of sense. But you guys do realize that that sucks for anybody in Europe who's going to have to pay, you know, fifteen hundred dollars just to get their board fixed from you guys. Everywhere else in the world, you know, like yeah, um, not you know, folks in Australia, yeah. Yeah. folks yeah. in Asia. So um, yeah, I think you know the 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 future is a world where there are you know one wheel service centers. Um, all over the place Very so good. that so folks don't have to send their boards back to San Jose. But mm -hmm. at this time, that's, that's the best, that's the best that we can do. And okay. uh, we are on it. 
All right, let's head over to the Magic Robots call-in line because a phone call without robots is just a can on a string. Let me hear you guys right now. 571-354-7338. I'm going to open up the call-in lines for about five to ten minutes specifically to tell us what the One Wheel has changed in your life for the better. Why is this thing still so awesome in your mind? 571-354-7338. I can tell you right now that the people who made it would, I'm sure, love to hear why you love this thing so much. 571-354-7338. Now, I can tell you personally, I have never bought something that after a year of owning it, I still love it just as much as day one. It's never happened to me. And, and I mean, I think I love this thing more. So I, I love trying, and my friends are all like, yeah, but you're still crazy, man. And I'm like, <laughs> what do you mean? Try it. Come try this thing. Five seven one three five four seven three three eight. Come talk to Jack and Jane. What do we have from? Is there something from the social media lounge over there? The Float Life social media lounge. Well, all over the place, right? We're up and down. All Take over away, the place right Now, but we've got a lot coming in. Um, of course, every rider here wants to be that contact for Float Life and their regional areas. For to no, be no, the, for future motion or for future motion. Yes. Yeah. Um, so they want to be that regional contact center where they are basically like, hey, I want to be that technical guy that can learn all this. Is this in the, the in the country or in Europe or all over? Well, Faboos in France definitely wants to be the boss. And, yeah, uh, well, run he the can handle it. Center. That's my man. <laughs> Faboos. What's up, brother? Um, that's good. So we've already got some people reaching out. And again, you know, there that doesn't mean that Future Motion is going to go ahead and contact you and all of a sudden you're a retailer. Um, Either but, way. We love Faboos' photos. <laughs> Who doesn't, man? Service center or not. <laughs> that is good. Yeah, no, I know I bought the thing because I wanted to get something to, to get me out of the house. Personally, I wanted to get out of the house. And, and this has been an amazing um, help for that. But do we have anything? 571-354-7338. It's your chance to tell them why you love the thing. Don't just sit here waiting for questions to blow them up. I know you guys are ready to ask them all your personal questions. But maybe it would be a good idea to start off with what you love about the thing. Somebody out there, 571-354-7338. What about you, Adam? What how do you is love? It, uh, how has it affected your life? Well, I told you, man. Like, I'm like, I have, I don't know if I have ADD or if I'm just like, I'm, you, you guys see me. I'm bouncing off the walls. I haven't even really had my coffee yet. He doesn't watch movies because they're too long. They're, they are. He only watches <laughs> one episode of a TV show and then he has to get up and move around. Yeah, man. So so this thing has been great for me because, I mean, for 45 minutes, I can just go literally like, you know, snowboard with a jetpack on my back and just feel like a 10 year old just exploring. I miss that. I don't have friends to go outside and play with anymore. Nobody does that at 34. <laughs> I miss that. All right. So tell me about the wheel while we get these calls coming in. Uh, tell me about the wheel. Why? Why the Vega? Why not the Hoosier? Why not the, the Burris? Where did the Vega come from? Yeah, so we've, we've tested every single wheel that is out there that fits or is close to fitting, we've actually tried. We, in the office here, we have a massive tire rack that has like three rows, and it's probably 10 tires, you know, wide. Mm -hmm. So uh, we've tested them all, and you know what? I, I think it comes down to this. It's like the marginal traction that you get out of the, the treaded tires I think at the end of the day, for me personally, is not worth the, the Vega is all around solid. I mean, like the things that we've gone down ski mountains on the, on the darn Vega. I agree. People know? are right now saying bullshit, bullshit. They're, they, they don't like them, their Vega tire. I love it. I love I, the freaking thing. I, I, I love the Vega tire. I mean. I haven't yeah, tried anything no. else yet, but. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. It does, the Vega, in my book, the Vega does everything you ask it to do. And then some, and it never, there's like no issues. I don't know. I think it's pretty solid. But I mean, would you say it's a good starter so, wheel? What's that? I'm sorry. I cut you off. I was going to say, isn't it a good starter wheel though? You don't want to start people off on a Hoosier. Everything I'm reading is that you don't want to start on a Hoosier because those things are really slippery. I, I mean, I guess so. Like, I, I don't know. I think, it, I think it's just all around like what's up, you know, it's, it's, so it's the smoothest thing out there, right? Like, and at the end of the day, not at the end of the day, at the beginning of the day, it's about creating like the smoothest riding experience, you know, the most fluid, floaty, whatever. Um, and so it, we have polished concrete floors here in the office. Right. It's like the smoothest service ever. You pair like a fresh, fresh Vega tire or even a not fresh Vega tire, you know, with, with the, with like a nice smooth surface, it's just like, 
you know, good night. It's like a magic carpet. Yeah. Um, well, let me stop knows, you. Well, maybe in the future, like we, I, I, here's the thing. I respect the fact that uh, folks have their own tire preferences. Sure. I think that's rad that they, you know, are that, you know, that into it. So maybe one day we'll we'll offer tire tire uh, different kinds of tires for folks that want different experiences. Um, it's not a not a bad thing to to think about. Let's take it to the Float Life social media lounge. The Float Life creators of float plates, float sidekicks, and other rad gear for your one wheel. Check them out at the Float Life. What do you got, Belly? They're rolling. They're all saying the Vegas. Uh always the one of the better ones i've ever ridden really because so i mean i see mixed reviews now i think that's people getting once you love something and you start customizing your board yeah. you're looking for the new thing right you're looking to make your board feel like it's new again to me it still feels as new as the first goddamn day i wrote it but, uh, but we do have another comment in, coming in like in the northeast the hoosier is smoother because the streets are always covered in sand grit and things like that did you from see adam hilliker's did you see hilliker's picture of the salt on the road that's who commented it's on unbelievable hilliker what's up dude shout out but i mean i hope i'm saying his name right but yeah man i mean he, he, it looked like this his street was covered in snow and it was just the salt and so i see wow. why like those northeast you know we're in virginia northern virginia dc um belly seen i've i ride around whether it's cold rainy well not in the rain but i i, I like i like the vega i gotta be honest with you i like the vega but i'm wondering if it's just because i haven't tried anything else yet so it's nice to see people's preferences uh, preferences and guys, Jack and Jane, if you ever need to know any information, Jeffrey Rosenzweig is going to take care of you. He's done every change on every tire of every size humanly possible. Beast rails or not? Have you seen the beast rails? <laughs> beast rails. That's, that's a monster. Right? It's huge. Thoughts? Yeah. Thoughts from Future Motion on the beast mod? Rad. Right? Cool. So cool. <laughs> I mean, that's what I'm curious about. Like, do you guys get jelly when I, like, when I saw you guys doing wheel talk and I had already done voice of one wheel and I was like, hey, uh, excuse me, get off my Kool-Aid. Do you guys ever feel like, uh, and we're joking, we've already talked about all of that. I love what they're doing. We've discussed that before. I can't wait for the next wheel talk. Settle. What, what did he say? Settle. <laughs> Settle. Um, so what is there? Is there any like a little bit of jelly? Like you get a little jealous when you see some people like uh, Greg DeGenti coming out with the silver handle or, um, you know, the flight fins that just came out. When you see us all in the community making these things, some random dude doing a podcast about it. How do you feel? Is that like a jelly thing or do you feel like, damn, this is cool? Uh, it's it's more it's the damn this is cool. Pretty much. Yeah. I mean, it, you know, um yeah, I, I think it's rad that people are are um, you know obviously enjoy the product so much that they're actually putting their own spin on it, you know, and I, and that's that's how cool is that? It's it's amazing. So to watch to watch these sort of like little um, yeah to watch it develop in different ways, I, I think is awesome. And um, you know, people deserve to have the experience they they want. And um, you know, I think there there is there some issues around modding boards. Yes, you know. Uh, avoiding the warranty well really modded boards um end up breaking more often that that's that's just like the the fact of the matter is that now, you saying that so we don't mod our boards or is that the honest truth that's, you can talk to julian about that that's a fact <laughs> uh, but but you know if if you guys look you know people in the community are adults they can make their own decisions if they if they want to do something to their board and they and that's what they're gonna love then hell yeah you know do it so i think it's pretty rad um and you know it's it's cool to see um yeah it's just it's been awesome to watch these these sort of communities develop around why around can't that. you then and and this is one of the questions that came in i know the answer to this but maybe you could speak to it so why if, if somebody were to ask you well then why can't you support us and sell our stuff on your website that's that's a whole different can of worms right there. Yeah, I mean, so uh, there's a there's a lot of issues with that, um, including liability. You know, everything that we sell, we've we've done. Um, you know, it's like a, approved by agencies of of record and things Ro like that. I, I would imagine. Huge, I would hope. Huge testing, huge testing uh, hurdles to do that. But yeah, the, here's the other thing. You know, I don't I don't feel that it's our place to to sell all that stuff. You know, like if you look at GoPro. You know, they don't sell all the accessories that exist for GoPro. They've actually leaned on their community to actually build out their accessory line in ways that they might not think is either appropriate or ways that they don't want to, you know. Um, yeah, it's just like 
open source in a way, you know, which, which I think is cool. So um, just because we don't, you know, sell it or officially endorse it doesn't mean that, um, well, I just think it's a whole different, whole different subject. But it doesn't mean you're against it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so. Belly, what do you got? I think the community and the company together are the ones that drive the, drive the future of Train. one wheel yeah. forward. So it's one of those things where together it's going to always be community is always going to keep adding on. It's never going to stop. So whether a healthy they, community whether they pick least, this yeah. up and sell it on their website or not, the community is always going to add more and more to make the one wheel even better than it is. It's a very good point. And I think what we could do, obviously for legal purposes, guys, they can't sell. What if you make something and it seems great, but then one of them breaks and future motion gets sell, you know, um, sued for that. There's a whole lot of legality that makes sense why they can't officially put it on their website and sell it. But maybe what you guys could do is rock some of that stuff in your wheel talks or in your, you know, some just like, you know, to see uh, like float plates on your board or a silver handle on your board, you know, to sh to show not necessarily that we don't we're not we're not against this. We just can't promote it ourselves from a legality standpoint, but we love the stuff you guys are doing. I think that'd be cool. Yeah. Um, you know, <laughs> I, to be honest, like I, I, I'm, I'm just like a, a simpleton when it comes to one wheels, you know, like they give me they give me one wheels and I just go ride them. And if it has a fender on it, I'm stoked. Let's um, give them a break. Can we give them a break? I feel like I'm deposing them on the chair. Who's the who's the worst one wheel rider at the company? Oh wow. Oh. Who's the best? Uh, Sammy. Who's Sammy? Tell yeah. me about Sammy. Why is he crazy? Sammy uh, was a member of the Hover Hooligans. Oh wow. What's uh, up? Yeah, Hover. He's a Hover Hooligan. He was a, formerly a Hover Hooligan. He got we plucked him. Is he a right speed? Out. Is he a speed guy? Is he a just a all terrain guy? Like, what's his deal? He's a madman. He's like, an absolute madman. No inhibitions. No fear. Yeah, no fear. Well, Jane, that's how you gotta ride this thing. I yeah, know. we we call him our in-house crash dummy, essentially, because anytime, like Jack used to test all the boards, but now like we've got someone who just, you know, faster, harder, like jumps and like. Doesn't even phase him. So well, you kind of need that. I'm sorry, Jack. Go ahead. Oh, I said he's in a lot of the videos. If we want some, we could we could point him out to you. Oh, is he in the one um, where that it just dropped where it's like no lift tickets necessary, fresh pow all day? Is that him? Yeah. Uh, probably. He's like he's like smaller. I know it because he looks like yeah. he's my height. It's like cell phone video. Yeah. Phone. Yeah. I'm so jelly, dude. I I watched that and I was like, that's the same kind of stuff I do. I gotta start sending them my my stuff. You do it. Absolutely do it. If you got that going on. Oh, heck yeah. It. I mean, I'm sure you guys know about all the uh, all the, the top riders, Bodie and, you know, Jeff and Chris and, and all those guys. Um, am I forgetting anybody? If I, if I left you out of that, I'm sorry. Um, however, I'd like to open it up to the folks. So if we can, let's see how this goes. I would like to open up the call in lines for the Magic Robot phones. That's right. All your calls are brought to you by Magic Robots because Magic Robots loves you. So let's open up the phone lines. 571-354-7338. Open line Tuesday. Ask them whatever you want. Just do it with respect or I'm dropping you. 571-354-7338. <laughs> I actually really I very much would like to hear from you guys. Any questions you have, just remember they can hear your voice, but you're not going to be able to hear them. So you're going to get your question in. And then I'm going to hang up on you, and then you can go back to the live stream and hear the answer. Um, but we really do appreciate anybody that likes to call in or text. What, Belly? What are you reading? Uh, someone just called you up for being a sponsor. Ah, well, whatever. You know, that is what it is. Sorry. Hey, <laughs> hey listen, I support these companies. They support us, and I believe in them. So, hey, it is what it is. Go ahead, Jack. If you got it, flaunt it. You know? <laughs> well, guys, I mean, I hate to say it, but, like, there's about seven laptops in here. A lot of gear. This stuff's not free. So, I mean, I'm sorry, but, yes, I will accept some sort of sponsorships from people I believe in, like the Float Life, like Magic Robots, like Craft and Ride, of course. Thank you very much, Craft and Ride, for the stickers. And, um, and yeah, I'm just trying to take care of you guys as much as I can. If I can help some businesses get the word out uh, more, then, hey, why not? I'm all for it. 571-354-7338 if you have any questions. So I've got some questions from the social media or from texting line. Awesome. Float Life Social Media Lounge. What do you got? So I've got one that's, uh, what are the plans for the race for the rail this year? Are there any more rider-focused events? Mm, that's a great question. Fantastic question. Great question. So, yeah, we'll be, we'll be back at, um, at Vail to do the race for the rail again this year. Is that where it is? Yeah. <sighs> Colorado, to the GoPro Mountain Games. Um, 
Yeah, I'm pumped. So last year we were like front cover on the Vail Times newspaper and like during all of GoPro Mountain Games, right? So it was like the headliner, even though, you know, GoPro Mountain Games probably wouldn't, they probably weren't that stoked. Whatever, yeah. whatever. <laughs> so we had, we, so I'll just give you brief history. So, so three years ago, we raised our staff internally just for fun and people watched and we we're like, oh, this is interesting. Two years ago, we had 16 riders. Last year, we had 48. So this year, I'm, wow. I'm hoping we can get, I don't know, 75 or something. Yeah. Obviously, it's going to be 100 because you've been doubling up like yeah, every year. We're just <laughs> exponentially growing. I felt 100 in my heart, but I didn't. I was too... Like, Believe. I want to yeah. yeah. I want to be conservative. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, no, we're super excited for that. Um, and that's always an amazing... Like The whole weekend is amazing. You know, you're in yeah. Vail. There's like millions of one wheelers everywhere zooming around that town. Yeah. It's just like, it's a great, great time. So come on out. Um, you can Google it for the dates. I can tell you off the top of my head, but I think it's the eighth June 8th through 11th, Boom. I believe. There you go. So yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll be racing out there. And then, you know, our goal is to do, we'd like to do like quarterly, quarterly, you know, whether it's race events or sort of like whatever, right. Riding oriented events, um, obviously float life in the fall is amazing so that sort of takes care of another one are there. you guys gonna come float life fest are you gonna be there this year yes yeah so, all right there so, we go so so we i found out about float life like no one told us basically <laughs> like no well, one that's told us the, okay that's been the main complaint i love you guys you're amazing with all due respect that's been the main complaint how did you not know it was happening it's all over all of the groups all of the guys, forums yeah, yeah. I don't know. You guys are you guys are deep in your world. Like, <laughs> that and everything gets so like, buried in those. That's true. They do get like, buried. Like literally, you post people, one thing and it's gone ten minutes later. <laughs> because people want to know: Are you in the one wheel riders groups, the owners groups? Do we have snipers just sitting in trees looking at the at the post from afar, or is that something that you you kind of look at, but but from afar because the more you interact, the more you make yourself susceptible to people complaining publicly. It's not so much about making yourself susceptible. It's more about like. Okay, you have to have like official channels where you give official responses, and then there's some channels that I, I think personally should should be the community. You know, it should be like this is your world, you know, and you guys can you guys can do what you want there, right? No uh, parents allowed. So no parents you know, allowed. <laughs> yeah. Mecca, exactly. keep them out of there. No, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. You know, if you are actually having trouble, like you should email customer support. Or you know that if you have some suggestion about something that'd be rad to do or whatever, you can comment on social media and we'll, you know that we're, you know, paying attention there, that you're going to get a real response from one of us or a real human. And, and I, I think that that's, that's a good, um, a good system. So it's, it's, it's about, you know, I think, um, so last year we learned about float life from Mike T, Mike Tavares, who's a good, good buddy of ours. Like, yeah, like I'm, I'm going out to full life. Like, are you guys like, what? What's full life? <laughs> <laughs> but you'll be, you'll be there next year or this year. Float life we'll festival. Float life fest. No, and because. And yeah, I mean, we're, we're, we're excited to, to support float life as well in, we're talking about a few ways that we can do that, mm -hmm. whether it's encouraging some more female riders um, yeah. or, or some other ways. So we're, we're excited to help out. Jane, is there a way that we can get more female riders into this thing? Cause I know the float Queens would love to hear from you. Totally. I've actually kind of been talking to Mandy, one woman, one wheel about, cause she has like these big float life dreams. Oh yeah. Friend of the show. She's the best queen of Queens. Yeah. <laughs> She's the coolest. So like we've been talking to her about, you know, like ways that like we can help, you know, her journey and how we can like, you know, have a presence at float life, but also like kind of get some girls out there. And now, you know, we've hired like a bunch more girls in the office who are now like writing. And so we've kind of like been talking about ideas about, you know, like getting more girls kind of involved in writing. So we've, we've definitely got some, some things cooking, but Good. I mean, the float Queens are just like iconic. Oh, they're right? so like, bomb. And I, we need to help them insane. out to the, to the listeners. We, we need to help them out because uh, Mandy needs a van. So I don't know how we're going to do that. But if we're going to do this, we need to get her a van that can actually make it. You guys had a van and it broke down on the way to uh, Vegas, right? We did. So I'm sure you could help her with the logistics of things. Right now, it's just me and Mandy trying to figure this out. But we got to get her a van. So if anybody has a van to donate uh, or to help us find one to rent for the week, yeah, we need help. Yeah, actually came by our, like, came to say hi, you know, a couple of weeks ago. And we saw his van and it's like decked out. Who is it's this? So Who? 
McCosker. To oh, okay. Tell. They came by like with their dogs and like, you know, we met for a ride and stuff. And um, so talking to her, I was like, you know, Jeff really knows stuff about his van. Like, so it's really cool to like connect people within the community that can like help each other out. Absolutely. If she, I'm just throwing this out there. If she's actually trying to ride from Boston to. Uh, no, that's happening, Jack. That is happening. Okay. Nine hundred thing. That's like a thousand miles. Yeah, we know. <laughs> yeah, I, <laughs> okay, just check. <laughs> all right, we got a call. Hold on, we got a call on the line for you guys. I know they want to get to you. Caller, who are you? Where are you from? Hey guys, this is uh, Tony Howard again from Portland, Oregon. Oh, what's up, Tony? What do you got for us, man? It's good to hear from you. Thank you for calling. Yeah, yeah, I really appreciate the show. I appreciate Future Motion coming on. Uh, Jack and Jane, you guys are the bomb. Uh, you're in a tough position, right? You've got a polarizing product because uh, it's the coolest thing ever, but you're a startup. I work for a startup myself, and and uh, it, it's a no-win situation, but it's a testament to how badass the product is that uh, uh, despite the growing pains, people are still um, are still on there riding it and wanting to buy it. So they're willing to put up with it. Um, so uh, I appreciate you guys sort of being the punching bag uh, for it. You don't deserve it, but it's it's nice that there's somebody to do it. Tony, um, my question is keep going, really buddy. quickly. Go uh, oh, just my my question really quickly is the firmware uh, update. Is there? Do you think that that there's potential that the a firmware update might come out around the time of the XR uh, first shipping. And are you talking for the, like a firmware update for the Plus and the V1 or just for the, I'm guessing for all boards? Yeah, I'm, I, I guess I don't know enough about it, but my thought is that uh, there'd be a firmware update that would cover all three boards. Tony Howard from Portland, Oregon. Thank you so much, brother. Let's get an answer straight from Future Motion themselves. What do you guys think? Is there going to be another firmware update? Um, I think that the... XR will have the firmware on the XR. I think will be slightly different. But like, uh, so so somebody who's got a plus and they didn't get the XR, what, what what's going on for them? Can they expect a firmware update at any point soon? I don't think that there's a plus firmware update that's going to be dropped when the XR comes out. Okay. Um, but I think that well, I know that we're always working on on stuff. So um, I, I don't think the timing is is going to coincide well dude uh, did, let me ask you this uh did well i cut him off again the timing's not going to coincide but you do uh, think about it um did the andromeda update work out for you guys in the end or was it more of a, a hassle i thought it was awesome that you can send out an update that will change the way my board rides however i'm sure somebody whose board then broke or they didn't like the change uh probably didn't appreciate the update did the update work in your guys eyes or is that something that was more of a hassle to deal with than um, a positive experience did it work for you? I loved it. I love it. But I'm 160 pounds, so that little extra, like, I get, I think for people who ride the board the way it's supposed to be ridden and aren't a little bit heavier, over 200 pounds, the thing is, like, adding magic to the board. I mean, I love it, personally. Yeah. Some people are ready to punch me in the face right now because they're like, no, the thing surges when I'm leaning. Yeah, because you're leaning forward, and it's using all of the energy, and it's trying to help you out. I don't know. Did you get a ton of complaints, or did you get, what was the majority, complaints or um, praise for that Andromeda I, update? update? was amazing. I love First, it, man. I think, I think Andromeda Update was amazing. Uh, to be for the record, there was like one or two boards that broke in it out of thousands. Um, so it was a huge and the, actually here's the deal. I could tell I could tell you both of those boards. Both of those boards were heavily uh, th this is gonna make me sound like I'm like on a witch hunt here. <laughs> both of those boards were heavily modified yeah. and that's actually why they had um, they're making some crazy noises. Well, in what ways? Like, was it modded with the right. wheel? Was it something with the rails? One, one of them was Sly Dogs. Sly uh, dogs we love, we Stro, love what up, Stro? <laughs> but your board is almost unrecognizable. <laughs> it's, part of why, it's part of why there's some serious issues. I mean, when you take every screw out of the thing, you know, you put you put it all back together. It, there's issues with calibration, right? There's there's all kinds of issues. So, right. Um, whatever. Moving past it. The, the update was the update was amazing. Um, so I'm 200 pounds, right? Um, I I love. It. I mean, I think there's more there's more power where you need it. It's smoother. It handles drops better. I think it is a major major jump. And look, I've been doing this for four years. I've been through many an update in my career, uh, firmware update. And I know that you're never gonna please everybody, right? Right. But um, I'm coming from a place where it's like. The first upgrade, uh, we were going eight miles an hour, 
you know, and there's no pushback. Right. And, and so like, um, I've sort of watched as the level of complaints have like gotten like smaller and smaller and right. smaller. <laughs> from, like, dude, this thing, this thing, like, you know, sucks to ride and like, it, you know, is slow and whatever to like, I feel like a slight, you know, powered surge. surge yeah. Like, yeah. Up like a steep but hill. I, but I, like think, a head. I so think I get it. And we're always working to, to make it that much better. But, um, you know, I think I will, I will say like, we have some of the smartest people on the planet, you know, spending like hours and hours and days and days, um, figuring this stuff out. So it's, it's always, it's, it's always improving. All right, let's go rapid fire. Cause I'm running out of time and I want to give away that mafia bad before we get to the social media lounge. I know I got to go one more question in that I have to fit in. What is up with the plus foot sensors? When can we expect foot pad sensors for the plus to be available for purchase instead of having to, um, <laughs> send them in to get fixed, is there any way we can get foot pads for sale for the plus? Is that coming at all? Why is that not happening yet? People seem really passionate about that. Why? Like basically a lot of what I saw was why put out the XR when we don't even have like replaceable parts for the plus yet. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's a great question. I don't know from an operation standpoint, like what, what that situation is. Um, but I, I did hear that. It sounds like 2018. It's a vague timeline. Okay. But that's, I, that's what I heard. So, well, so can you do uh, us a favor from the voice of one wheel? And that's all of us here. Can you do us a favor, Jack and Jane? I need you right now. We're here for you. We're listening. All right. You too. I need you to go start barking up that chain of command and tell them we need foot pad sensors for the plus. God, they're chopping at the bit for the thing. Please help us. So we don't get an, another <clears throat> okay. a million emails. Please, please, please. They want it. Please, please, please. Is it, is it like this? We need foot pad sensors. <laughs> I, I just wanted to I hope that. you guys really appreciate them doing this. They didn't have to come on the show. And quite frankly, I certainly do. Uh, I hope you guys do too. What's going on in the Float Life social media lounge? So I'll uh, list, uh, run off a few questions here just uh, that I have. Rapid in front fire. Of me. I'll start off with this one because it's kind of talks about what we were just talking about. Sure. Uh, does removing the wheel and reassembling cause calib- can, can it cause calibration issues? Quick answer. Yes. yes? So, uh, yeah. so you need like, oh, sorry, that's not a quick answer. Yes. It does. Well, no, 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 that's, that's worth hearing. I'd rather get the real answer. Uh, it a hundred percent does. So, so when you cal when we calibrate a one wheel, like here, here's the thing. Our factory has, um, uh, like a certified flat level zero floor and, uh, setup that we calibrate every one wheel in and it's difficult basically, um, and takes firmware coding and everything when we do it in our shop here in santa cruz our floor like it's a normal floor you'd walk on it and you wouldn't know but our floor like isn't level enough to actually calibrate correctly that's like the level of precision that's that's we deal with on calibration so we and actually people wow. notice that so if, if you have a board that's like slightly uncalibrated you will you will notice so be careful um, putting those wheels on all right that makes sense what else right. you got yeah. um going back thing make sure i mean don't do it officially but if you do do it <laughs> at your own risk then we then you can use a milk crate um a milk know, a milk and, like milk like like from a cow milk crate flat yeah. surface have a milk crate put your wheel in um you know i've seen that i've seen that done yeah again at your own risk <laughs> at your own risk all right moving on you're an adult uh, you can handle well, you can make decisions so actually, before we move on to the uh, the next question, I think that's I just want to touch on shapings real like 30 seconds. I know your guys answer guys. Uh, a lot of the people wanted to know, can we get custom shapings? Can we get a shaping that's literally called custom so that I can make it however I want to ride it? And I think, yes, that's cool that we can get some new shapings. I'm sure you guys are you're working on new shapings. But I from a legality standpoint, again, the same reason you can't sell people stuff on their website. If if they just open up the board to you. How many things? How many points of, like testing calibration are in a, a shaping? Yeah, no, I think that's a great question. Like, uh, so you're gonna, like so, over, somebody's gonna fly off a cliff. There's over, I think there's over sixty. Uh, what is it called? Like characters or something? Unique signifiers in, in that go into the digital shapings. And so, you know, we've actually talked about it a little bit, creating custom shapes. I think it's a a killer idea. It's just about executing in a way that's safe for everybody. Right. So, um, you know, one day, once one day there probably will be is, is the shortest answer. I but, um, we gotta, we gotta identify like the parameters for each 
that um, you could be within any point in that parameter and you'd still have a safe riding experience. So, but yeah, it's rad. Not going to lie to you. Will we have new shapings coming our way in 2018? Around. Do we, do we have new shapings coming our way this year? Um, hopefully. Woo. Hopefully. I hope so. I'll take um, it. it. I mean, quite frankly. It's a huge, you know, effort basically to create shaping. So, um, we have like the best firmware person in the world who basically, you talk about the robot phone line. This guy speaks to, uh, speaks to one wheels. You know, uh, before, before we do the giveaway and now I'm, I know I'm going, going a little quick, but, um, you guys are doing great. I have one complaint with the app. Uh, some, some people have asked if we could have charge points, like a pin that we could drop on a charge point that we find on the map in the app so that we can all start compiling like ways. Like, you know, you know, you can tell there's a police officer on the side of the road because somebody marked it. Um, yeah. can we have like markable charge points? That would be great. Um, so just when you talk to them about the foot, the foot pad sensors, maybe bring that up too. But, um, I, I, I would like to ask you guys and belly's doing some work behind the scenes right now, which, uh, wow, you are amazing. You're amazing. Um, okay. Here's my real main question. Why are we incentivizing speed in the app? When top speeds will cause nosedives and get people hurt. That doesn't sound like a good idea to me. They're going to slow you down. No such thing as nosedives. You say there's no such thing as nosedives. Did I lose them there? There's riders who push past the, the, the threshold. Of war. That's a great question. And I'll, I'll talk to you a little bit about the history of the app, um, which will answer, come around and answer your question. Please, so, yeah. Uh, so... Uh, if you recall, the one wheel OW Buddy app um, was out, and uh, and it was all the rage. And folks were, were leaving the one wheel app to go um, use the OW Buddy app. And, and you didn't make and that. That's somebody else made that. Somebody else made that. Yes, um, a developer over in I think the Netherlands or somewhere over there. And and um, I think it's rad. Like it has a, a, some amazing features and functionality in it. And that's why folks were using it, which is awesome that there's that level of innovation coming from the community. And um, so one of the features that it had was a speed leaderboard. And a lot of people loved that. Um, and so when we uh, basically brought on a lot of the features and functionalities of the OW Buddy app, that was one of the things that we um, took because it was uh, something that it, sounded, it seemed like the community really loved. So, um, so that's basically the origin story for that. But I, to be honest, I have to agree with you um, that I think that I never personally encourage anyone to ride fast. You know, I, I don't. Talked, I know I don't. In in the pre-show, <laughs> you know, I I used to I used to be a little daredevil out there, you know, and and now I'm cruising 15 to 17, 14, you know, if I'm slightly hungover, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> and no, it's you know, quick it's like, safety it's, check. <laughs> it's the journey, right? You know, I'm I'm not racing anybody, so um, yeah, be safe out there. Don't go too fast, um, and um, you know, wear a helmet. We're going to give away something to the donators in just a second. I might go a minute or two long today because questions keep rolling in. I'm going to get you guys out of here. You have been fantastic guests. Thank you we're, so much for coming on. Basking in it. There's no hurry. You're basking in it. Tell. Jane, um, have you guys thought about maybe having adding a security um, aspect to the one wheel? Like maybe you can't, like you can you, unlock it with your app, I guess is the question yeah, coming like in. Turn it on from your app or unlock it. So that if like it. somebody steals it, they can't really turn it on. I personally don't like that issue right. because if something goes on with the app, now I can't ride my own board. Right. Yeah, we've seen um we've seen a lot of people like request some kind of like security feature with it as well. Um, you know, we when we take them out, we have like kryptonite U locks that we yeah. hook them up to, like if people go surfing or whatever, just like them up, lock them up at a bike rack. But, um, you know, or like take it with you. I, I don't leave it anywhere. I don't trust it anywhere with anybody. Up. It, to me, it's, I don't, what else would you leave in your car for $1,500? Come on. Here's my, right. issue. here's my issue with a in app lock thing, right? Okay. <laughs> if someone's going to steal your one wheel, here's what they're going to do. They're going to pick it up and they're going to put it in their car, right? Yeah. Like, they're not going to ride off with it. Like a, awesome. like a dot pro. <laughs> have your wheel powering it on and like zooming off from the cafe. Like if they do that, I don't know, golf clap for them. Yeah, you deserve like, it. <laughs> <laughs> but like realistically, someone's going to pick it up and put it in their car. You know, they're going to steal it. They're going to like, when you steal something, you like take, you take it. it. You, so they're not going to know that your board is locked. Now, maybe if you have like a tracking device in your board 
and you could find my iPhone, you know, that might That has been be. asked on the community. Maybe you could do like a find my iPhone or like a t just throw a tile square in like with the battery uh, comp like compartment. Um, toss a square in there. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> what do you say? I love, I love. Toss a square in Just there. toss a square. It's that <laughs> easy. Come on, guys. I know. Pop it <laughs> yeah, but that, that that I think could be useful. But I think that, yeah. I, to be honest, my personal honest response to the why don't you guys have an app lock was just like, I think your board's still going to get stolen, even if you have that feature, you yeah. know? So it, it could be wrong, though. There, be wrong. there have been cases, too, where people have, like, gotten their board <laughs> stolen and then, like, reported it to us because we can, like, see the serial number of, that like, would be cool. Boards. So then, so then, if someone like tried to sell it on Craigslist or buy a charger, that would be yeah. cool. Yeah. yeah so, we, we, we so you can that. see that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so yeah, if someone says my board was stolen, here's a serial number, and then someone on Craigslist is selling a board with that serial number. Yeah. Dang. Found, what what would you do in that situation? What would you do? How do we? we what what we do we do? Fly out with with weapons. Special ops. <laughs> I love SWAT it. teams for days. Send Amanda uh, Thompson out there with the van. Nope. She'll take care of them. We have what's called a blacklist. We actually <laughs> do. You actually have yeah. a blacklist. We actually have a blacklist, and so if you're on that list, you can't purchase any accessories. You can't, wow. Like you're Ooh. frozen, basically. Well, that's good. Um, that's good. And yeah, we can. We, we work to try to get you get your board back. Mm -hmm. Last question. We'll get you guys out of here and give away a mafia bag. Waterproofing, waterproofing, waterproofing. When you go up the top of the chain, people want to know. Can we, can you, can they're saying, Luch Dog, can you show these guys what we've been doing to make our boards more waterproof so they can jump on board? Is there, I know that's why swappable batteries is not a thing. Everybody wants swappable batteries. I'm sure you guys can figure out why. It's just the never ending range. But I guess the reason we can't have it is because it, it gives away some of our um, waterproofing capabilities. Some people are saying it's waterproofing equivalent to my shirt is waterproofing, but if you throw water on me, I'm still going to get wet. So it's, yeah, it can resist a little bit, but like people are saying, I wouldn't rec necessarily um, advertise it like it can go through puddles and then my thing shuts off. Mm -hmm. Right? Like yeah. it's not waterproof, water right? Water resistant. Water, water resistant. resistant. So, so yeah, I, I, you know, be, be careful riding through water for sure. We, mm -hmm. we don't recommend it. And here's the thing why it's a challenge. Because here's the thing about gaskets. Gaskets, which is basically the rubber seals that make something waterproof or water resistant. Right. Um, the grade of gaskets like, is extremely hard to have be consistent over thousands and thousands of boards. Right. So we do the best job that we can to make the highest level seal. But ultimately, if you check that seal, you actually just ruined the gasket. Yeah. Right? It's like true. one of these catch 22s where like you can't open up the gasket to see how good the seal is because once you do that it's like it'd be like a tape. You know, it's like let's see how good this tape is. Yeah. Oh, okay, put it back. It's like, less sticky. Right. It doesn't right. Play that. So, so, you know, yeah, basically like don't don't I wouldn't test it and I would be conservative, you know, if you spent your hard-earned money on a one wheel, like there's no sense in risking it. Maybe you have a board with a really good gasket seal and you've been riding through rain and puddles all the time and you have no issues and, you know. It's Russian roulette, awesome. man. I wouldn't do it personally. I got to get you guys out of here. I'm moving a little quick. Last Another question. Thing, one more thing about water is, like, make sure that the charger port is completely dry. Like, if you go ride in the rain and then immediately plug it into charge, like, even the tiniest bit of water in there is just going to, like. That's a really yeah. good call. We've, Maybe. we've seen that a couple times, so make sure it's dry. Awesome. And speaking of charging, thank you, Jane, the king of uh, the queen of transitions right there. Nicely done. Last question, I promise. And then we'll do the mafia bag. I just keep remembering things that people get me to ask. This is the last one. I promise. Why do you guys advertise a 20 minute charge time if it absolutely takes longer than 20 minutes? Now, to me, I think it takes a good 30 to 35. A lot of people are getting in at 40, but nobody's saying 20. Is that <laughs> true? I mean, it, come on. Come on. Thank you. Fake news. Fake news. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe we could maybe we could um yeah. alter that that First, wording. I say twenty to thirty. <laughs> All right. I don't know. I think back in the old days, back in like twenty sixteen, there's something with just the electrons in the atmosphere. 
that led to just super fast charging times. And it's slowed down a little bit since. Then. It's it's the atmosphere. Also, anytime you charge your battery over time, that battery is going to wear down. That is and then true. And it's going to take longer to charge up. Damn it, Belly. I was going to not ask but this, but now I have actually, to with the XR. Here's actually, real, here's actually a real answer as well. Sure. So I think that um, <laughs> in addition to all the not real answers, yeah. here's a real one. So I think that... Uh, from what I've heard from the electron whispers, um, 20 minutes is the amount of time it takes for the core to charge. Okay. So like basically you get, I, I don't know exactly what that means, but like the core charges in 20 minutes and then it's like trickle charge after that. Right. So it, which basically like fills in all the gaps, right? So like we recommend that you leave your board on the charger for 24 hours or 48 hours if you've been riding for a while. And what that does is that the cells, the battery cells, you know, if you fill them up and de deplete them over and over, when you fill them up, um, they don't all fill up to the same level after a while. And oh. so what leaving your board plugged in for a long time does is it balances those cells. So oh, I thought it charge. hurt the board. I never leave my plugged in, mine plugged in past. I wait 10 minutes after the noise, which I'm going to get, I'm getting that noise on the show, but I wait 10 minutes after the noise and then let it trickle a little bit and then I pull it out. I didn't know that. That's a really great information. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So that, that'll balance yourself. So if you, for example, if you've been seeing that your, your app reading of your battery is, is off, right? right? If, if you're dying at 15% or something like that, most often than not, that's because your cells aren't, aren't level. So your, huh. your app is only reading one cell in your battery module. It's only reading one cell. So that cell might not be indicative of wow. the rest of the cells if your cells are imbalanced. So um, core charge, trickle charge. Not fake news. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now we're getting somewhere. Yes, now we are getting somewhere. Let's give something away, Belly. We've got to do that and get these people something for free. I might even throw some background tunes in here. Ooh, I love that song. That's our intro. Let's do this one. All right, so we'll give away something for free. Now, you guys know that uh, anybody who's donated to the Float Life Fund is eligible for our giveaway. And what we do is we give away something for free every show. Uh, again, congratulations to Sean Schwantes, who last show won himself a free lunch. This week's winner will get themselves a free double black mafia bag. Carry around your one wheel in style. So that is exciting. Um, thank you. I'm sorry. What's that, guys? Filled with swag. You're going to fill it with swag, too? No way. All right. Well, then that is straight from Future Motion. And just so you guys know, they asked us. What can we give away? We want to be a part of this. This is so cool. So thank you guys again for being on the show and providing this for everybody. Belly's going to pull up a random number generator. We've already got our Float Life Fund uh, pulled up here. And if you want to figure out where to go to uh, donate, remember, 75% all of that money goes straight to the Float Life Fest in 2018. And 25% of it goes into prizes for this show to give back away to you guys. So... Uh, you will go to litmradio.com. Scroll down to the big wheel in the middle of the page. Got a call from Canada. We've got a call from Canada. See, this is what always happens at the end of the show. They freak out. I called for you guys like 20 minutes ago. Hold on, All right, Canada, let's do this. Guys, do you mind? Can we get Canada in here? Let's totally. get Canada in here. All right, let's talk to Canada. Where are they? Here they come. All right, Canada, what's up? Who are you? Where are you from? Hey, it's Chris. I'm from uh, Vancouver, Canada. Chris, what's up, my friend? Do you have a question for Future Motion? Thanks for joining the show. This is the voice of One Wheel. Yeah, man. Uh, I just want to say uh, thanks for all the great products that they put out. Uh, still riding the V1. Hell yeah! Woo. Yeah, hell yeah, man. Do you? What are your? Uh, are you going to upgrade to that XR when it comes out in March? No, I don't think so. I'm going to ride it till she dies, man. I'm going to keep it going. I love yeah. it. What do you got, Belly? Do you have a question for the crew? Uh, no, man. Just keep up the good work. Just love you guys. All right. There he goes. Thank, Thank you, sir. You. We appreciate Chris it. Demand. That's our first call from Canada. Yeah. That's three continents now. We got France, Canada. I need Australia. I want something like this. Oh, now we're getting somewhere. You guys are so hot right now. I mean, I love her voice. Oh. <laughs> How hot is that? Is that Jamay? <laughs> what, wait, what? Is that Jamay? No, no, no. That's uh, somebody that we use. That's Felicity Heath. She's the voice of all of our production on Looch Dog in the Morning, which again is on tomorrow at 10 a.m. right here on TTR Studios. And if you like this, you will absolutely love that. Belly, let's give away something for free. Let's do this thing, man. I'm excited for it. All right. Who are we going to hit today? 
Ready to generate? Yeah, generate that number. He's going to go and give a oh. random number 19, 19 out of 22. out of 22. Four from the end. All right. Here we go. We'll pull uh, up the list. Let's get there. Kelly's doing coming. his thing. Four from the end. Here it goes. Go all the way down. All the way down. All the way down. One, two, three. Bob Nicholson. First time winners only. Bob Nicholson. Congratulations, my friend. You. His daughter, Shay, rides one wheels. Really? See? I think so. That's Ride what I'm talking on. about. So hook him up with some really awesome swag and get Bob hooked up. Thank you, guys. Future Motion. We'll get doing Bob's that. information. Bob, uh, reach out to me on Facebook, please. And I will set you up with Jack and Jane from Future Motion. Get you your mafia bag all ready to go. Man. Uh, yeah. I, I have Bob's email. I'll just shoot. I can shoot him an email. All right. You're going to take it from here, Jane. Thank you so much. Man, this is perfect. All right, guys. That's about it from us. I uh, Is there anything left that you guys would like to say to the group? Uh, we love you. You know, we like you. we... To be honest, we um, we do this because it's rad to see how much fun everyone has out there. And so keep keep sending us your photos, sharing your videos. We love to see what you're doing. We share around the office all the time. And um, yeah, good, good work out there. Stay safe. Be happy. I can't wait to see what else you guys come up with over there. Jane will be looking for those wheel talks. Can't wait. Thank you guys for joining us. Again, that is Future Motion. They did not have to do that. They did not have to come on this show. They literally just sat here and got deposed by us for about an hour and 11 minutes. And I really appreciate that. We'll get you guys on again. Will you come back and join us again? Maybe with some other people from the company too, with, behind you? Absolutely. We would love you. We love you. All right. They are official fans of the show, Jack and Jane <laughs> from Future Motion. Thank you guys so much for joining us. And for all of you listening today, it's been a blast. Don't forget, all of our calls have come in through the Magic Robots call-in line because a phone call without robots is just a can on a string. The Float Life Social Media Lounge, creators of float plates, float sidekicks, and other rad gear for your one wheel. Check them out at thefloat.life. That does it for us, Belly Matt LaBelle, and all of us here at TTR Studios. Thank you guys for hanging out. It's Loot Dog in the morning, and this is the voice of one wheel. <laughs>